Let's go to this one. Oh, oh, this guy. They won't let you in Nashville without that thing. Yeah. So this is this is your uh, 19 and 53 Fender Telecaster. Um, not all original. Um, in fact, this this guitar has been abused on a lot of levels. Um, but it um, 1953 neck and body. A lot of the hardware has been replaced, and the pickups, um, again, the neck pickup is a, if I recall, Lindy Fralin, just the vintage Tele um, pickup. Um, and But the bridge pickup in this guitar is actually pulled out of an old Fender lap steel. Really? Cool. Yeah, in the, so that's the, that's the Don Rich thing was in from Buck Owens band is if um, he used to pull uh, in the late 50s or I guess it would be the early 50s they when the lap steels the Telecaster pickup and the lap steel pickups were the exact same size they yeah. just kind of tweaked the magnets or I guess huh. the, the wraps but I'd read in a thing that Don Rich used to pull the pull the the pickups out of Fender lap steels and put them in his Telecaster oh that's so and I asked cool. a couple guys you know much older than me that would have been from that era that knew and they were like, yeah, totally he did that. So that's what I did with this guitar, um, again, just kind of years ago. And, um, what am I doing now? yeah. Just real snappy. And uh, all that topic. But it also sounds, um, so there's this, I mean, and these strings are actually kind of dead for my taste, but it's just totally got all that stuff. All the stuff you want to tell you to do, and then it'll still do the rocking thing. Um, and this is, you know, I would say, I'm not really sentimental about instruments, but I, I, I would say that if there was you know, if I sold every guitar I owned tomorrow, this would probably be the one I didn't sell. And it's uh, it's just one of those guitars that just never needs anything. It's like always in tune. It, it always sounds good in a track. Like when nothing else is right that day, this guitar sounds right. Right. Um, and uh, and on way more than just like kind of standard country, you know, way more than chicken picking. It does all that stuff, but it's just a really really good instrument that I feel really lucky to, to have to have owned for a long, long time. And um, yeah, this is, it's also one of the guitars I've had the longest in my life. So, uh, I, I, and th this maybe, maybe has probably been on more records than any other guitar I have. It'd be close, but. Well, isn't it is funny though, it. like in your career odyssey, how like the telly was kind of the sound for everything people were doing. Oh for, man, yeah. I mean, thanks to, you know, I mean, well, you know, Brent Mason and everybody was chasing that and he Oh yeah, I mean Brent obviously like <laughs> he you know, he you know completely changed the face of country music. I mean, you know, yeah, before that, obviously, you know, Waylon Jennings and yeah. you know, Buck Owens and stuff, like the telly was always a thing and then Brent made it this whole other thing. Right. Um, which was incredible and you know, that guy's just unbelievable and a legend. Um but then, you know, what's funny for me as we talked about, like my kind of you know main road gig when I was really young was this guy Josh Turner, and it was all real traditional. It was yeah. Brent played on those records, yeah. It was and then JT played on some of the later ones, but it was very traditional, all Telecaster, right? And that was my whole gig. And then about the time I came off the road, there was this shift, at least in Nashville, and people were really getting a, away from that, right? And you know, I had to. Uh, you know, I think part of my session journey was like convincing people that I did something that wasn't that because most people associated me with Josh's right. thing. And, um, and, and, uh, but I'm so thankful because the cyclical nature of music, you know, I would say, especially even in the last five years, like it started to feel like it's coming back or at least people are, are more open to, you know, kind of traditional country guitar sounds. And, and I'm like, oh, great. I didn't, you know, I'm, yeah, yeah I'm, 
I love doing that stuff yeah, yeah. and I felt like I didn't get to for a long time. Yeah. Um, and so, so, so it's, it's really fun. But like I said, even in that period when people didn't want, you know, want necessarily like, well, let's call it more of the nineties country sound, this guitar I still used all the time. Sure. It's just such a great guitar, uh. such a great, and th this one, you know, we talk about guitars that feel like home base. This is probably the most home base feeling for me. You know? So, okay. When you, when you're starting a session and you, uh, you hear the song, do you find the challenge in the beginning is just like picking your picking the guitar for it or or picking the effect or the or the amp or the where does it start for you because that's always kind of a yeah. kind of a thing right yeah, I mean for me it's you know I try to not have too many preconceived notions about yeah. stuff and and it's all very reactive to me. I'll hear a song in the control room, you know, whatever it is, we listen to the chart, whatever, and, 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 and I'll pretty quickly walk out here. And I don't spend a lot of time between hearing the song and like getting in my chair. Yeah. And there's typically just some version of something that I'm hearing in my head that's just an instinct that they could say they hate it in a few minutes, but <laughs> yeah. there's something in my mind that I'm chasing. And then based on that, I kind of make a, a quick decision, gut decision about a guitar and an amp and I figure it out. And, and then based on the part, do I feel like it, is it, is it a dry thing? Is it, you know, where's my head at with it? And so, you know, I'm essentially just doing a, you know, a pretty quick mock-up of here's where my head is at. Yeah. And that's a lot of the, you know, sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes before everyone plays, you're out here fooling around with something and they're going, hey, Derek's on it. That's cool. That's the that's our intro or whatever. Yeah. You get lucky. Sometimes you you spend a take or two chasing something, and you're like, man, this is I'm I've actually this is not it. This yeah. is, I'm not the guy. Like this is this is you know, not necessarily not the, uh, the not like they hired the wrong guy to say, but you're like this isn't the right character for this song right. or this track or or I'm I'm misinterpreting this or whatever. And you and then there's all kinds of shades in between those things. But right. but yeah, it's always just like I hear a song something starts to kind of wheel in my head and I walk out here and start trying to kind of like, you know, mark my territory for lack of a better word. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm trying to kind of broadcast to the room, hey, here's where my head is at. Right. Say no, you know, someone stop me if you think I'm, if I'm chasing, if I'm going down the wrong path. Yeah. Stop me now. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe let me hang myself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, who right. knows, you know? Yeah, um, let's see where it goes. But yeah, it's a pretty, um, it's a pretty quick, pretty quick process for me and it's just all it's all just reaction yeah that's all it is yeah